here I am again, attempting, attempting a new live stream video. We'll see if this one works out. The one before this last one, my sound was off, so hopefully you're hearing me. And the time before that, I actually forgot to hit the button that said start streaming. So I talked for a whole hour and drew a picture and I wasn't streaming at all. But hopefully today, hopefully today everything's going well. And we're going to start with this goose drawing. All right. Now, now for my goose drawing, I think I'm going to start out with some super simple shapes. Geese are pretty, pretty simply shaped. So we're going to start out here with his little head. Just a circle for right now for his head. And then I'm going to put in his beak here. Just a triangle for right now. Ooh, here I better, let me adjust this. Let me adjust this a little bit. It's a little bright. I don't want to draw, I don't want to draw too dark. Ooh, so that you can see it. So that I can still, so that I can still change things as I go. That's a little darker. All right. I'll make my marks a little darker too. Here's my circle. Here's my triangle. Round it a little bit because that's how his bill looks. And now let's see. I'm going to put in his neck and we're going to start with this curve here and then swoop it. How far does it go forward? It looks like it goes forward to just before the end of his beak. So we'll start here and then swoop this down like that. Oh, he's got such a perfectly round little shape right there. Down like that. And then he's got an even bigger shape that we're going to start right here for his main body and wing. And that's just going to be a big teardrop shape is what we're going to start with here. Nice. Nice teardrop shape for his wing. He doesn't, I don't have a picture of his whole wing. This picture he's cut off about right there. So that's where we're gonna make a line. All right, now let's put in the rest of his neck shape here. There we go. And there's a good basic start. I'm gonna start refining this shape a little bit because his wing actually only comes down to about here. So I'm gonna oof, adjust that a little bit. And then this part here actually lumps out a little bit like this. This is where he hits the bottom of his body, swooping down toward the tail, up like that. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna start adjusting his head shape a little bit because of course his head's not a perfect circle. My goose, he looks like his bill comes up a little more there and his head swoops up more like this. We're just adjusting our shapes little by little now that we've got our basic skeleton in. There we go, and I'm gonna adjust his mouth. He's got like a like a little jowl right here. I'm gonna bring this out like this. Add a line right here. I think I might make his head a little bit bigger. And then make his neck swoop a little bit further up there. And then maybe a little bit narrower right there. Because I like that shape better. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to use an eraser and I'm going to start erasing some of these initial lines so they don't confuse me as I move on here. I'm going to erase this one that I didn't like. Down to here. And I'm going to connect that bit there. 
move that over so you can see what I'm doing there. There you go. All right, we've got a nice basic shape going. I'm gonna add in his little facial markings so that I know where I wanna put his eye. His facial marking starts on, it's almost his entire bottom of his chin here, but it comes in like this and then swoops backwards. And then this part swoops backwards all the way, I think up to about here, not all the way to the top of his face. And I think I've got it swooped a little hard. There we go. Get my tinier, tinier eraser out here. Erase that section. There we go. I think his beak, I think, doesn't come quite so far in like this. So I'm gonna erase that too. This section right there and adjust this little bit here so it's something more like how I want it. Because his chin goes up a little bit like that. And then his beak starts way out here. And then curves down. See, I got his beak in the wrong direction. Over there. There we go. That's starting to look pretty good. Nice shape. And his beak starts way up here at his nose and then angles in very sharply toward the bottom there and then back out. Nice. All right, I think this slopes up a little too squarely. So I'm going to shape this head a little bit more. I think it's a little rounder here. And I think it goes back a little bit more than what I had it. Just erasing as I go, adjusting my lines. There we go. And I think his eye should go, let's see where he, the point of his bill right here. Not sure if it's a bill or a beak. I'm honestly not that great with anatomy, but I think his eye goes right about here. I like that. There we go. That looks good. That looks good right there. All right, let's take a second and get this eye a little cool because I think it's fun to to really get the eye in in a way that you like because it looks so much more realistic as as you move forward. It gives you sort of like hope for the future, I guess, if your eye looks really good starting out. So I'm going to make sure to preserve this lovely little highlight that he's got going here. He's got this lovely little highlight on the very top of his eye. And I'm gonna try and keep that in there really well. Just a little, little bit of darkness on that pupil there. generally happy with this shape. Maybe his beak a little bit more. Generally happy with this shape, so I'm gonna start shading in some colors, some little colors here. I'm gonna start with his neck, because it's the darkest, and it curves around like this. It's not a straight line. There we go. And this is where he is black. So I'm just gonna start Shading in, I'm going to look to see what direction my feathers are going in. They curve around to sort of follow this goose's neck. So I'm going to start my shading with the side of the pencil. And I'm going to just sort of go in the direction, use my pencil to go in the direction that his feathers go. 
and I'm going to use short, sharp strokes to sort of replicate the texture of those feathers. Try not to go in lines one above each other all the time or else you'll uh, it'll look too regimented. You want to sort of break it up a little bit there. Following the line of that feather. We're not too worried at this point about like particular feathers, individual feathers. Right now we're just starting to create a little bit of texture here with our pencil stroke. couple more layers in there. Make sure we don't have too many hard lines. I'm still adjusting the shape little bits here as I go along. It's almost, I'm almost never done adjusting the shape. And even on this head, you have to make sure to be careful and, and notice the direction of your feathers to give it a better overall dimensionality. There we go. And these feathers sort of floof back this way, over here behind there. got some texture going in here. I'm going to go in and uh, with my little smudge stick and I'm just going to smudge this together. Still going in the direction of the feathers with my smudge stick. And you remember you don't need a smudge stick to, to accomplish this look. You can use a q-tip, you can use a paper towel. Don't use your fingers though. Your fingers have too much oil on them. You'll end up with a greasy, greasy look. And if that's what you're going for, sure, I mean, go for a greasy look. But I feel like you can replicate that without using your fingers and just smearing your, your finger oils all over the place. Gross. There we go. All right, now I'm on this neck. I'm going to add in. I'm going to take my 4B pencil here. It's not very sharp. I don't really want it super sharp at the moment. I'm going to take my 4B pencil and I'm going to add in some of the shadows on his neck to make him look a little more three-dimensional. I'm going to add in this shadow that I see here at the base, sort of a rectangular shadow here. There we go. And then I'm going to add in this bar of shadow at the very back of his neck. We go, just adding in little, little bits of shading. I'm going to make it darker as I get toward the edge and lighter as I get toward the center to really make it pop, pop out there. And at this point, I'm also going to start, instead of this smooth line, I've got this duck's neck here. I'm going to start adding a little bit of feathering details by just drawing my pencil out just pieces, pieces at a time here. See, and this was too long, so I can just taper this off with my eraser. There we go. And this part here is very dark, so I'm going to start up here at this eye and add in this dark shadow here. I feel like it's mostly dark on the top of his head except for... This area here is a little light. It must be where his face hits the light the most. So I'm going to draw this shadow back. But this shadow only goes, let's see, to the top of this white spire, I think, here. So I'm going to stop because there's a nice highlight right here on my picture. I'm just going to carefully add in this darker edge right there. And then fill in the rest of this surrounding area around this highlight that I found. 
on the top of your head. And you've got this little low light here. And a little bit of low light here. Now I'm just going to blend some of these in with some lighter tones on the edges of each of these areas of shadows that I found. I'm going to just lightly go over the edges so they don't look like so stark against the highlights. I want them to blend in a little bit more. There we go. Now I'm going to smudge this in too. Don't lose those highlights. Go back and clean up this edge a little bit here. All right, and now I'm gonna work a little bit on this white section because it's not a solid white. It's got some highlights and some shadows here on his chin. So we're gonna work on that here for a second. All right, so most of this is a pretty stark white. We've got mostly this shadow here on his chin, where his chin rounds off a little bit. But there's still this highlight. Keep in mind this highlight under here. It's not as light as this part of the section of the face, but it's, it's lighter than this rounded bit right here. So we're just going to carefully add in a couple of layers where this is darker and then leave, leave that off here on this bottom section. I'm still going to lightly smudge the inside of this white spot because it's not, it's not a solid white. And then I'm just going to shape it up a little here. Give it a little bit of regularity. I'm not going to work on the water, I think, today. I think today we're just going to focus on the goose himself. I'm going to add to his beak a little bit there. I feel like this is too tall, so I'm going to narrow this up a little bit. There, that looks better. Look at that shape. Yeah, it's a nice shape. Let's erase this line here. Oops. Oh no, I think my eraser is just about gone here, you guys. I have to use a regular one now. My, my gnarly pink one I've got here. There we go. That's a much nicer shape. Now let's work on getting some tones into this, into this goose bill here, I guess. And we're going to start by finding his nostril. And that looks like it's just above this divot. So I'm gonna put a line there. And then a more of an arcing over line right there. There we go. Alright, then I'm gonna find where it's darkest, and that would be under here. Oh yeah, I forgot it didn't work. That's gonna be, that's gonna, I gotta get some refills for that eraser, huh? Oh well. Onwards we go. Make sure this is darker. You're quite dark up here. One of the darkest spots. I don't wanna lose this really nice line I've got for his eyes, so periodically as I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna re- establish his little eye right there. Not necessarily the entire circle, just sort of darkening up a few spots to make it pop out really nice. And then let's see, his neck has a nice shadow here. And I think I put his neck a little close to his chin. So I'm gonna erase that and then pull his neck back just a little bit more. Just darkening up some of these areas here. Mm. All right, 
right. Not that anyone's not that anyone's listening, but someone tell me tell me if you can't hear me. I wish my I wish I knew if my microphone was working. All right. So now I'm going to make sure to go back in and reestablish not with my highlighting eraser. Jeez. Reestablish some of these highlights here at the front of your neck. You've got a nice highlight where the sun hits. And this highlight up here where your head is. Well, that'll, that's going to be fun to do later without my, without my little eraser. All right, that's a pretty good face for now. We're going to start filling in some of the shading for the rest of his little body here. And I'm going to start by separating this wing out into, into good shapes. I don't think I think I got my line a little too high here, so I'm gonna go just like that. I'll lower that line a little bit. Cause he's got this second wing coming up over here. There we go. And this goes a little bit more to a point like this. And then whoosh down to the side, just like that. You may notice that as I'm sketching, I tend to hold my pencil quite far back. And that might seem a little counterintuitive for those of you who don't draw very often or who are new to drawing. You tend to have the habit of, of when you're sketching, putting your, pen, putting your hand really close up on the pencil, I guess choking up on that lead. But, uh, that's not really what you want to do when you're doing a loose sketch like this. It's too rigid. You're, you're looking for more of a flow in your drawings when you're doing just these little sketches like I'm doing today. So you hold it back a little bit more, especially in these initial stages where you're just developing a shape. Like here, I'm going to develop this little section of wing here that goes up like that and then ends in a little feather. And then he's got this other section that sort of goes like this, straight down and then curves back. I think straight down and then curves back. And then this piece goes like this, out even further, I think and then ends right where this curve is. It'll end in a roundy bit like this. We're just breaking down this wing into little shapes so that they're easier to work with as we move forward. And then we'll shade each of these little shapes until they look more like a goose, a goose wing. All right, we'll start with this wing since we've already shaped them all out like this. And we're going to start just giving the suggestion of feathers. I think normally I would do this part with my eraser, but I guess that is out for today. I'm just going to start tracing in. Start with, start with the line of the feathers and where, where they actually set. I'm going to go like this. Sort of trace where my feathers are going here. And this is a whole feather right here, this whole piece. Just a couple little scallopy edges that I'm putting in here. Just little feathers. Just some suggestions. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be too detailed. We're just having a sketch. Just having a sketch. Just make sure your feathers get look at your picture really closely 
and make sure that your feathers are getting smaller as they head back on the shape. Make sure you're keeping sort of a repetitious structure in your feathers. There we go. All right, now I've got these basic lines. I'm going to smudge this shape a little bit so I can cover up all my white. I like to have a nice grayish background to work with. And that's usually because I'll use my eraser here and then draw my highlights like that. But let's see if I can let's see if I can preserve my eraser for these feathers. Now this shape seems like it shades the darkest back here. So I'm just gonna give a little I'm using a little circular motion here to just sort of shade the edges of this shape a little. Shades a little bit out to here. A couple of the edges of these feathers, quite dark. All right, now I'm gonna a little bit more carefully darken up the edges of some of these feathers. Give us a little bit of a delineation between between each of these little feathers. There go. Now I'm gonna smudge this shape a little bit. Blend that into there. Oops, forgot this guy's little feather here. Just giving you some tones. Just giving us some tones to work with here. Alright. So this shape is darkest all the way at the edge, and it is lightest at this top edge. So I'm going to make sure we can see that top edge highlight by adding in some good middle tones there. And now I'm going to see if my eraser will, will cooperate. And I'm going to just highlight these little areas. Nope, it is not cooperating. Okay. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pull out my needleable eraser. Oof. which I need to get a new one as well because it is quite old. Knead it up a little bit here and then shape it into the sort of shape that I want for this feather highlighting, which is sort of like this. Just a little narrow, skinny, skinny little shape. There we go. See, that works just fine. And now I'm just going to edge out some of these highlighty feathers a little bit here and there just creating creating my little pattern here Make sure we got this highlight here at the top. Got my pencil. Now that we've started adding in a little bit of these mid-tones for the wing, I really want to go back really quick and throw another layer of darkness on the darkest spots of this goose head, just so we don't lose this contrast here. I'm going to go in and just re-go over some of these darkest areas in my goose with an 8B pencil is what I'm using right now. Just 
these dark, dark, dark spots that I don't want to lose as I move into more of these mid-tones. little bit of a dark tone in the center here too I'm gonna throw in there all right make sure that's nice and blended a little bit there lightly go over some of those highlights because I don't want them to stand out too much Not on this lightest one right here on the neck. I want that to stay nice and poppy. I'm just going to dot in a couple more little highlights here where the water's catching, or where the light's catching the feathers on this gooseneck. A little bit up here where I'm just dabbing. I'm just dabbing with my eraser right there. And it looks like I forgot to add in some color up here on this goose beak. So I'm gonna do that really quick too. Just gonna add in some places where we've got some tone variations. Oh, I'm trying a new allergy pill today and it, I don't know if it's doing the job. I'm still quite sniffly. I'm going to gently shade in this, this bill here everywhere except these big highlights. Actually, I'm going to shade in the highlights for right now too and then come back and pick those out with my... Make sure these dark spots... my needle eraser. Oh no, I think I think I'll smudge a little first. Blend this in a little bit. There we go. And then I'll add in a little bit of highlight. Right there. Right there. And then I'll make sure to go in and darken this little I guess it's a nostril area. I'm not sure what it's called on a goose, but darken that up a little bit, make sure it's looking nice. All right, now that we got this darkened up a little bit, I'm gonna go back to my wing. See, because now it looks more like I've got mid-tones in there, not just uh, one similar tone over everything. All right. I don't want to spend too much time on these details, so I'm going to move on to the next sections of this wing. And I'm going to do the same thing on this wing as I did on the other wing. I'm going to start with some diagonal lines that are going to guide generally where my feathers are going. One here, and they slant upwards and then narrow. It looks like on this section of wing. Looks like we got one more feather coming off of here, way at the bottom. Upwards and narrow. 
just sort of following my general general wing areas here and I'm gonna start just drawing those in little little bitty scalloped wing feathers like you go up like this unless you're drawing a finished product unless you're drawing something that you want to look professionally done I wouldn't spend too much time mapping out these feathers really with anything, you just want to get more of the impression. I spent a lot of time getting tiny details worth of feathers and fur and stuff like that correct, but it's all really about the impression that the picture gives you. So don't don't spend too much time just picking out random feathers. Pick out pick out some feathers in the in the areas that you want to focus on on the face on the tops of the wings, areas where it's important, but not everywhere. If you pick out feathers everywhere, it's gonna just look too much. I'm gonna shade this down here a little bit more because it's underneath. Here we go. Just shading away, making this shape pop out a little bit there. Hide it underneath the wing section there. And then I'm gonna smudge it up just like last time. Make sure to cover all of that white paper. There we go. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with my needle bowl eraser. I'm gonna go in and basically just cover up those lines that I drew in earlier with my eraser here. Ah, oh, see, I got it too skinny. You got to be careful getting it too skinny or else it won't be strong enough to erase. You got to keep it thick. Keep it thick. <laughs> it sounds terrible. All right. Keep looking at your reference photo. Don't just assume you remember. Because you totally don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know if you do. Maybe you guys have a better memory than I do, but I will not remember. Doesn't matter if these lines are perfect right now because we're gonna go back in and fix them up as we go. There we go. Now trying to maintain these highlights, I'm going to shade in these feathers a little bit more. shading in bits and pieces to give it a more cohesive look. Sometimes I shade the bottom of the feather but not the top so much just to add another little extra layer of value differences. You want to get as many value differences as you can manage most of the time. if you don't want your drawing to look flat. Make sure I get this guy in here. Smooch you out a little bit. And I'll use this smudge stick to edit edit the eraser marks that I made to give them more of the swoopy look that I'm going for. I'm going to go back in and draw in a couple of little 
areas where my feathers have a little oh what's it called I can't think of it now that little bar that goes in between the ugh, you know what I mean this part that part of a feather I do not remember what it's called but hopefully you guys could let me know I'll have to look it up because it's kind of terrible that I don't know what it's called all right now I am going to do some shading on this bottom section of wing so that we can get it worked in here really quick I'm gonna do the same thing again with my lines keeping a general idea of the shape of this wing and where the feathers are going to fit into that. This one's pretty easy. Doesn't have too many awkward lines. So I think for this one, instead of putting in all those individual feather shapes, I'm just going to give it a general shade. Here to show the shape. Here's some shape here. This whole area. See this whole line that I made right here isn't actually a line on the goose. It's just a series of shadings. So I'm going to start shading that in just with some soft circles. And then it comes up right here. A shady spot. There we go. A little bit right around here. Just the edges of this shape. Now I'm going to go in with a back and forth motion. I'm still using my smudge stick in the general motion that the feathers go into. Just for ease. Just for ease of use, I suppose. Smudge you out a little bit. Now, instead of putting the feathers out like I usually do this time, I'm going to just mark it up with my eraser here because these feathers are relatively indistinguishable. They're, they're hard to actually see, so I'm going to just use my eraser like this and make some little half moon style indications just like that just a little bit of a indication of feathers and I'm gonna go through and mark up some of these oh what's that in six I better be careful that's a darker darker pencil now I'll just add in a couple of these darker areas where you can see the feathers off in the distance in this darker spot in between my highlights stay in between your highlights just like that it's a little dark just spot you up there Now I need some shading about here in this middle spot. This is where the wing curves away, I suppose. Curves away from the rest of the body. Just a little darker spots on these areas where the feathers would be in shadow. And then way back here is much darker. So we're gonna pick out a couple of specific feathers back here just for showing where that darker area starts. Mm, I think another row. I think there's another row right there. Mm. 
There we go. Just adding some shadows in places that I see shadows at the moment. There's this spot right here. This spot down here. Now this part is mostly white on the actual goose, so I'm just adding in a little bit of shading here to sort of soften up this white. Couple places of shadow. I'm going to erase this guy because it doesn't need to be there anymore. I'm going to add in some shading right about here. And start. She's got teeny tiny feathers here, so I'm just going to make some sort of dashy, slopey lines. A little irregular following a general pattern here. Curving my lines to give the suggestions of feathers. And this angles up really sharply here. And then this pulls into the rest of this wing like this. Smudging where he's darkest as we follow along the shape of his body. And you are still a highlight back here, so I'm going to lighten you up. Now, in the picture, you can't see where his foot is, but it'd probably be right around here somewhere. So I'm just gonna plop that in there. Alright, I'm gonna clean up this line here. Do a little bit of shading. through this highlight too. I'm going to go back in and add a bunch of little dashes of eraser highlight. There we go, just creating sort of a texture. Some shadows here. this to blend a little better into here than it does. This is actually pretty blended in here. It's not quite as distinct of, of a shape as I've got it right there. So I'm gonna blend this up in here a little bit. And swoosh it all together. Oh, it looks like I forgot, I forgot this little piece of wing here. He's got 
it looked like initially it was just this crazy lump, but it looks like it goes all the way down where it's supposed to. It's just very dark right here. Very dark. Add in some wing feathers. Now these wing feathers, wing feathers like this are actually more difficult than you'd think because they're at a strange angle. And you've got to do your best to sort of replicate that angle a little bit. And then these just come down flat like this. There we go. I think you swoop down a little more like that. Ducks are such a teardroppy shape, you know? I want to make sure that this highlight in his eye really pops out. So I'm going to find my 8B pencil and I'm going to sharpen it up. And I'm going to make sure that everywhere around his eye is nice and dark except for that highlight. That way it'll really pop. Darken up that iris a little bit. Get that ring a little deeper and then go to town darkening up that pupil. That pupil is always going to be the darkest spot of your animal most of the time. buddy. Hey buddy, he's starting to look like a goose. Now we're just gonna continue to add little bits of shading here and there as we desire them. Darken up some spots, highlight some other spots. Just sort of slowly but surely work your way into the goose that you want. He's got some lines right here to show how his feathers separate. Add those in. But they all blend in with the rest of this. Yeah, you're looking pretty nice, Mr. Goose. This is actually a part of a pair of geese that decided to decided to live in my pond this spring. And they actually had a bunch of little babies, little goslings, a little while ago, and they were just the cutest things you have ever seen. They were adorable, and it was so fun to watch them get older and experiment with flying. That was really fun to watch. Like watching these gangly, gangly goslings practice their, their wing movements. I don't know. That's just, there's a certain kind of joy <laughs> you get from watching animals that I do anyways. Darken you up, making you darker. Mm -hmm. Alright. Make sure you're all blended in there. here and there. There we go. Now I want to darken up this section of the wing here a little bit because it is overall just a little darker than the rest of that wing. So I'm going to go through here 
and darken up some of these feathers. Making sure again that they're the darkest way up here where they're hidden from the light the most. Now I'm gonna smudge that in a little. I am going over my highlights right here, but that's okay. I'm gonna go back in with my magic eraser and pop those out a little bit more again. Just, this is sort of a, sketching is, is quite a back and forth thing, you know? You go back to the highlights and then all of a sudden your darks aren't dark enough and so you darken those up and then your highlights have disappeared. It's, it's a process. You gotta be patient. Patient with your process. Mm -hmm. Man, I am ordering some new stick erasers, that's for sure. Make sure you're smudged in there. Now I'm just adding in some some shadows to make sure that the depth of my goose is adequately represented. All the shapes that he makes up. Where his wing folds over rest of his body. And this has a nice, this is actually the edge of his, oops, excuse me, hold on. <coughs> excuse me. I've been talking too much. I'm going to edit that out if I ever put that up. I've been talking too much and haven't stopped to get a drink of water. I have a metal straw, so it makes it uh, loud. Loud, I guess, when I decide to get a drink of water. So I'm going to make sure I've got this sh shadow in here really strong, because that's where his wing stops. make sure this is a little darker here. I've got too much white going here. So I'm just gonna smudge right over that. If I had time, I would go in and add so much more contrast to this guy, but I do not at the moment. So he's just getting the rough, rough sketch treatment. <laughs> Someday I'd like to have more people show up to this live stream so that I can get, you know, just some interesting conversations going and, you know, I want people to share their art with me. That would be fun. I actually got a comment on the post that I made for this for this live stream <laughs> it's that stuck with me I guess I suppose, I suppose it shouldn't I should let it go but I said you know on my post I was like come come and draw a goose with me <laughs> and one of the comments said oh god no and I was like oh god no that's so vehement is like is like my goose drawing so terrible that you just can't bear can't bear to be seen in the same room with it random internet person who hated me I guess oh well I'm gonna make sure I keep this shape here oops lost the highlight gotta make sure to maintain those highlights there we go so yeah not too many people are into this live stream yet, but it's early days, and I am terrible at, at advertising, so hopefully I can improve on that as, as 
time goes by. I think I'm just gonna get a nice darker block for that wing for right now. I don't really need to detail that guy up. He's not the focus of my drawing here. Make sure this is darker. I'm gonna put a couple feather indications over here. What is 332? That concludes our hour. And we're gonna call this a pretty, pretty fun duck. Or goose, sorry. This is a pretty good goose. I had fun drawing him. And I, I think I'm getting better. I mean, I've had more practice with birds, but I think I'm getting better at this uh, drawing quickly thing. And we'll keep practicing. Anyway, thank you for stopping by if you did stop by and i uh, hope to see you at next week's live stream until then goodbye <laughs>